evening. It's 1905 in London. I'm Nikki Scott and this is Dave King and these are the Together Talks. Thank you for joining us either live through the wonders of Zoom and YouTube or you may be watching this as a recording at a later date. You'll find all of the Together Talks recordings on the Rotary in Great Britain and Ireland YouTube channel. Yes, good evening. Welcome to the Together Talks. We've had three already. We've had Jennifer Jones, Carl Wilding and Michael McQueen. And we're delighted tonight to welcome the incoming president of Rotary International, Holger Luck. We'll be putting a number of questions to him this evening. And thank you ever so much for those of you who've sent us questions in advance. If you're in the Zoom room, then please feel free to send across your points and your questions during the interview. And if you're on YouTube, then again, join the chat. Last week, Nikki and I had the good fortune to be in the chat room. There was lots of good chatter around there. So again, use it wisely. So in 35 days time, Holger will become the first German to take over the helm of the world's largest humanitarian organization. A Rotarian since 1992, who lives just outside of Hamburg, Holger is CEO of his real estate company, NUC KG. He was previously a partner and general manager of NARC Enterprises, a 126-year-old family business. Holger was confirmed as president nominee just 12 months ago after, after Sushil Kumar Gupta from Delhi Midwest Rotary was forced to step down as the nominee through ill health. It's all a far cry from when Holger, as a young boy, was getting up at 5 a.m. every morning to work in his family bakery. So before we meet Holger, let's play a little clip of a video from the speech he gave at this year's International Assembly in San Diego this January. I think all of us are aware that we are on the lucky side of life. That means we have a special obligation to open opportunities for others. But our greatest and most joyous opportunity is to do this together. The journey in front of us is not about I and my. It will not be my Rotary year in 2020 and 21. <laughs> I will not be accomplishing anything of lasting importance. But together, there is no limit to what we can achieve. If we focus instead on we and our, in our year, we will accomplish great things. One of the great joys of my life is to share experiences across generations and cultures. When we learn from each other and build friendship that transcends ages and borders, we make the world a better, more peaceful place. I was lucky enough to be there in San Diego for International Assembly, where over 530 district governors from all around the world and all of many of their partners came to prepare for the Rotary International year ahead. And it was so great to hear from Holger mapping out his ideas and his vision for 2021. Although clearly this was all before COVID-19 and lockdown. Little did Holger know just how prophetic his theme would be, given that Rotary Clubs all over the world are now no longer meeting behind closed doors. So, hopefully complete with his wonderful backdrop and through the wonders of technology, live from Hamburg in Germany, hopefully we should have with us Holger Nuck. Guten Abend, Holger. Wie geht's? Holger, Good welcome. Good evening. I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here at home and... Uh, as you see, I'm uh, fine, and I'm happy to be with you tonight here. So lovely to see your smiling face. You always have a wonderful smile and your very distinctive glasses, we've all come to know. Um, so Holger, we can see your theme is Rotary Opens Opportunities. Why don't you just 
start by telling us a little bit about how you came to that theme, if you would. So I remember quite well when I was uh, nominated as uh, our president 2021. So I think after 10 days, we have been already in Evanston because we are uh, uh, nine months uh, later than everybody else in, before me. And the first thing they asked me in Evanston was, what is your theme? And I said, hang on, I have no idea. That's, you know, that's a process. That's, that's a process. And at least I remember quite well when I was right after the convention uh, in Salzburg visiting an old friend, a past RI director who sadly passed away this year or last year. And so we spoke about, and he spoke about chances. And when I, when I drove back, I think that, you know, chances is something, something interesting. And then we started to develop this and then we came with opportunities instead of chances and opportunities. Yes, yes. And I never, never expected how important this, this, could, this could be uh, with the uh, opportunities right now. And indeed, so I love this theme because it opens opportunities for, for everybody for the people we serve and for ourselves and for our new members. We indeed opens opportunities for prospective members of Road International. So that's something also we can marketing if we are looking for new members. And of course, if I think about the people we serve, uh, so providing eyeglasses is uh, we are really opening opportunities to people or providing wheelchairs or clean water. So whatever it is. And for us, it's definitely Yes, to live a, a better life, a more meaningful life. Yes, a more meaningful life. Yeah, uh, that's, that's wonderful. Holger, let's, let's start by just having a, a chance to get to know you, Holger, the person, a little bit. Um, why don't you just take us back along your path and tell us a little bit about the opportunities that Rotary has opened up for you along the way? Yeah, being in the position I'm today, becoming in just a couple of days, uh, uh, Germany's first Rotary International president, that's uh, unbelievable opportunities. So, and when I started with Rotary 28 years ago, and by the way, before that, I was for 10 years round table. And I know that round table is also very, very uh, successful in Great Britain and Ireland. Uh, and so I was for 10 years round table. And many of my club members became Rotarians. And for me, to be honest, I was waiting to be asked to be a member of this Rotary Club I'm joining today. And, and then, yes, it's, it's step by step, becoming some offices in your Rotary Club and then a club president, and sometimes district governor, and uh, uh, then some offices in, in here in, in, in Germany. You know, I was uh, uh, um, chairman of all German districts for youth exchange. That's really shaped my, my life. This was for me really an, a great opportunity. And then director, and then, yeah, and now I'm here as a president-elect of Rotary International. That's wonderful. And there's a little hint in your banner behind you about how much you're a fan of Rotaract. And we're gonna have some lovely questions, I think, later on from some wonderful Rotaractors. But let me start off with a question, if I may, from Peter Chandler. He says, are you excited to be becoming the first president of RI to take office virtually. <laughs> yes, you know, this is, this is something, it is how it is. And we have to make the best out of this. And uh, yes, of course, I was traveling, but uh, no, I'm, I'm, you know, one of my attitudes is to always think positive. And I'm looking for the positive parts of this uh, being at home right now. First of all, you can sleep much better in your own bed instead <laughs> on planes. Uh, I'm saving a lot of money for Auto International while not traveling. And, and I think I'm, I am able to meet many more Rotarians than every our president before me. That's so this is, this is an... There's always an upside. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And obviously this situation we all find ourselves in has accelerated change enormously for Rotary. And Drew Lacey um, asks a good question. 
Given the increasing age profile of many Rotarians, is it not time to get back to our roots and mount a national campaign to re-engage with the business community? So we're looking to re-engage with people who are working and still in their career stage, not just the people who are more in a retired mode, right, Holger? Absolutely. And this is, some, this is, by the way, something what really concerned me. If someone asked me what makes you sleepless, then it's this what makes me sleepless, uh, being not, uh, probably not really interesting for young professionals or professionals at all. So we are definitely not able to become younger in Rotary. So that's a, but, but we have to take care to be very carefully to be interesting and attractive for young professionals. And that's for me, uh, the most important thing because yes, we are very proud to be a business network, but if we are just a network of retirees, as you said that, uh, then it's hard, then it's hard. And if you're coming into a Rotary Club as a, as a road actor and just seeing gray haired uh, men, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, probably one of our weakest points right now. I totally agree. We really have to work uh, on this problem. Yeah, so you did say in your uh, speech at assembly about wanting, really enjoying the multi-generational aspects. I'm gonna hand it off to Dave. I think he's got a few questions in the lineup here. Yes, hold this evening. It's just staying on that point, Barry Hackett is asking, how will Rotary satisfy an early but growing demand for a new level of full membership of Rotary without being attached to a club as a way of future-proofing Rotary. Any thoughts? Yes, yes, yes. It's, yes, membership is our, our, our internal goal number one. Absolutely, absolutely no doubt. And uh, so one of our weakest points and our strength are our, our Rotary clubs were at, at least, uh, 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 yes, they are. They, they can decide their own their own future, and so so I think it's. I try to convince Rotary clubs to think about their future, and to find their their own solution. So so it's 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 difficult to to tell them, and it's not definitely not my attitude to say well, you have to do this, you have to do this, and you have to do this. To do this. I think it's really up to, to every Rotary Club to think about, yes, what kind of members they want and what kind of, for what kind of members they are, they, are, they are looking for. And again, there are so many opportunities. They just... I think, I think what's changed the dynamic, Holger, is clearly COVID and inevitably there are a few questions around COVID. So let me throw this other one at you from Peter Hamilton in South Wales, who says, if we emerge from the coronavirus and Rotary will have changed for the better, how do we keep up that momentum and not go back to the old normal? <laughs> yes, yes, ho hopefully, hopefully every Rotary club is really taking that momentum. I'm not quite sure if every club is doing this, but this is indeed our, our opportunity for change. And that's when I'm, I'm at least whenever I'm, I have the opportunity to speak in front of, of course, the, the, the screen right now. So I'm, that's one of my major points. And hey, don't, let's not go back to normal. Let's take this opportunity, take us so where we are riding a, a virtual wave, wave right now. And let's keep on top of this wave and let's not go back to normal. And there's so much we can rethink in Rotary. So I would love, as I said, uh, each Rotary Club should, should look for its own future. I would love that each Rotary Club really starts from scratch and rethink everything, everything, meetings, location, states, meeting times, how they are looking for new members, really everything. I think with this, we really can make Rotary more prepared for a yeah, more successful future. I'm not sure what it's like in Germany, Holger, but in the UK, the numbers are about three quarters of a million uh, volunteers for the National Health Service. I would imagine there's a similar story in Germany. And Norma Johnson is asking the question, what advice do you have to clubs wishing to be recognized as a viable 
volunteering opportunity for all those who have volunteered during this pandemic? This is a question very often, I'm very often asked. And uh, very often I'm asking, hey, you don't need someone from Germany to ask to answer this question because that's everywhere different. So like, like the, the virus uh, was uh, hitting countries uh, in a different way. So we are really on the lucky side in Germany because we are right now coming back to normal. Restaurants, hotels, all these things are open right now. But uh, this, is, this is again different because every country is affected different. And in some parts, people are not able to do any, any uh, uh, service, any volunteer service during this uh, lockdown. And uh, so, so my advice here was always, hey, this is a good opportunity to make a community assessment and to go to come together with local authorities, other charities and uh, large companies to, to look for, for, for opportunities for help. And I'm still thinking that. Whenever we try to do something alone, we are not as successful as we try to get other, other uh, uh, players on board and to, do, uh, to try to achieve something together. Nikki. Yes, let me come back in on, uh, let's go back a little bit towards engaging other generations, Holger. Um, I know we use the term professional a lot, um, but I want to make it clear, we're not negating any non-professional or any other person who, we, we basically bring leaders of mindset, right? How do you define a leader that would be suitable for Rotary? That's, again, it's, when, this is something I, I discussed with Americans, and they see it different than, than we in Europe is, uh, seeing this. So in older times, and that's still some, some older Rotary clubs and also important Rotary clubs in Germany, they are seeing leaders, they want to see a, a position uh, for, for Rotarians uh, in, in, in companies or, or uh, in, in governments. And uh, so, so I think, so, you know, we are looking for people who are able and to have the ability to lead, have to have the ability to be leaders and have the ability to take uh, uh, responsibilities. I think this is something what is what is really really important. And when we are looking for for young professionals, what I'm definitely doing. So then we really we we have to look for for for, for great young people with the potential uh, to become probably great leaders. So I'm looking for being able are they able to take over responsibilities and 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 is there the uh, the, uh, the potential to be? I think this is this is the most important thing. So Clive Amos is asking, what do you think would make Rotary more attractive to young professionals? And I know we've got some exciting ideas in the pipeline. So do you want to just talk a little bit about some of these other ideas? Yeah, yeah. Think... <laughs> this is something, again, so, so, so all of us, not all of us, but uh, so in my age group, I'm 68 right now, all of, all of us, we think we knew what young professionals, young people, uh, uh, needs and what they are looking for. But you know, why are we, aren't we ask them what is attractive for them? So, so my idea is always, hey, ask road directors, ask young professionals what they prefer and let's build their rotary, what they love and what they, what they need. So, so again, I, I just, yes, I'm, I'm still thinking, I know that, but I think that's the wrong way. They should build a new and different rotary what fits to their needs. Absolutely. Go ahead. Yes, Dave. Holger. Yeah, yeah. No, thanks, Nikki. Holger, let's, um, let's have a look at climate change. Um, and this is a question from Willem Buttinger, who says uh, Rotary International Campaigns for Action on Climate Change. He says, yeah, I've organised a conference for October in Norwich on climate change, applying the lessons of COVID-19. He's saying my Rotary Club will not support it. They say it's too political. He's asking, what's your view? Is climate change too political for Rotary? You know, you can, being political, you can excuse everything if you want. I think for me, there are many, many things in this world, there's a right or a wrong. And for me, there's no doubt that uh, Climate change affects 
all of us. So while, while other areas of focus that's just affects countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, or uh, South America, when we talk about poverty or, or illiteracy, but climate change really affects everybody. Your country, if I think about the floodings in your country over the last years, if I think about the, 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 the uh, wood burnings, uh, wood fires in Sweden, so all this, 20 years ago, nobody thought about that. So I think climate change affects everybody and uh, the being political, that's for me, that's just an excuse. It's, it's an excuse. So I'm really looking forward uh, for the next decision of the Rotary uh, the Foundation, of the trustees of the Rotary Foundation. And I think we can something expect, uh, but uh, I think we have to wait uh, a couple of weeks, and uh, I think we will hear something. So and I'm proud of that. So you may be, and I have no knowledge, are you suggesting we might have environmental climate change as the next area of focus? So not, not to put pressure on the trustees of the Rotary Foundation, but uh, I think we definitely will see something about environment. What is, what is for me always the first step. And by the way, taking care of our environment Nothing can be wrong with this, nothing. You know, uh, the subject around the subject of environment, sorry, Dave, did I? No, 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 you, you this, I, I wanted to get in Cheryl Law's question here because often it comes up about the environment, about the carbon footprint we leave behind. And of course, we're all branded right now, Holger. And uh, we do love an international convention. So Cheryl Law has said, do you ever see a return to the huge convention gatherings? Or do you think we'll move to a more digital format? So I hope and I think, and what I will, I can do what, I will do what I can to use both formats, of course. Yes. So that's, that's uh, and I think that's, that's, that also fits to my, my speeches, uh, not going back to normal. So when we are going to have this convention in Taipei, what I hope is possible. So, so we will definitely do a lot of these also uh, virtual. So this live streaming will be, so we decided already in, uh, at our eye to have it, to have uh, not all, but some of the plenary sessions as live stream and uh, also some of the uh, breakout sessions. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. Of course, this online convention might be the largest number of people ever attended, it's, you know, so it'd be nice to have both. Yes, and go ahead, Dave. Um, Holger, I would like to look at Rotaract, if, if I may, and actually my own club in, in, in West London, we're looking to set up a, a Rotaract club at a, a university this year, and coincidentally, one of my club members has put in a question, and it's Janet Tyers, who says, Rotaract is up to approximately age 30, Rotary is much older, how do we bridge the gap? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the, to be honest, there is no gap. So I think this gap is, and so there are so many, so many opportunities. I love this word. There are so many opportunities to do something against this, this thinking of a gap. So first of all, uh, we, there is no upper age limit. So if this Rotary Rotaract Club decided to be Rotaractors till 36, that's okay, that's fine. It's up to them to decide where their upper age limit is. I'm, I'm not afraid that, that there will be a competition between Rotaract and Rotary because it's still a, a, a younger organization. And I think all the youngest members from 18 to 25, they are also, they are looking for their older members and they make sure that they are not becoming 68 in a Rotaract club. But even if that happens, you know, we, we, we never got them. And so we are, well, why are Rotarians afraid that there is a competition? So again, so there's, there's there is no, no gap. And uh, I'm encouraging uh, Rotary clubs, hey, why don't you take a 25-year-old uh, young professional as, as member of your Rotary club? There's nothing what speaks against that. So for me, again, I don't see any gap. I don't see any age gap here. So, so taking your last answer there, Holger, Joey Vassen asks, what can Rotary clubs do to support growth in Rotaract? This is a good question. That's a good question because that's not just the one way. I think it has to be so something what, what is benefits for both parts. 
I hate this win-win wording, so I don't like that. But it's 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 definitely about that. You know, in older times, so Rotary clubs were looking for Rotary clubs just to run their code room for larger events, and this times definitely have gone. Uh, but so I would love to see simply working together. And for me, the most important thing is uh, is mu mutual respect and working on eye level. I think that's for me that's the basis for 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 a, for a, uh, um, for working together of Rotaract and Rotary. And then of course, all these things with, when we think about uh, mentors and mentees, Rotarians really can help, can help uh, young entrepreneurs and Rotaract to, 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 to get, come into their business really with their expertise. And, and so there are so many things also, Rotary can help Rotaract, not just with money for their events. No, really, really, really being, Yes, like, like a very close cooperation. That's what I really would love to see. That we've got lots of questions on Rotary, and I'll try one more with you. This is from Megan Gearhart. It's a great question. She says, with the global pandemic, how do you suggest Rotaractors who may be less financially secure go about discussing the new theme of Rotary Opens Opportunities? Yes, again, what I, what I, what I just said, we have, we have so many experienced uh, business leaders in, in Rotary. And if we're going back to the roots, to Paul Harris, to his group, when they founded Rotary, this was also helping each other. And that's definitely okay if we have always our four-way test in mind, of course, our core values. But it's also okay the helping, helping uh, young Rotary actors to, to get into the business or to find a job. I think there's nothing wrong with this. And indeed, it becomes difficult and hard for young people right now, uh, uh, graduated right now from, from, from the studies and then trying to find a job. It's, it's, it's pretty hard right now. I think that's a great point, Holger. I think one of the forgotten avenues of service that Rotarians um, sometimes lose sight of is the vocational element, sharing our skills and sharing our, our workplace experience and having mentoring programs. I think that's a huge opportunity for Rotary. And of course, we enjoy our wonderful foundation, which um, always is an amazing opportunity to leverage our money through grants. And Patrick Sewan here says, what do you think about the opportunity for Rotary clubs to apply for global grants? <laughs> yes, I think they, they can expect something, but again, this is something the trustees of the Rotary, Rotary Foundation will decide uh, without uh, my advice, uh, but I think let's let's be let's be surprised what what we can see in this in this case. And of course, they can always become a Rotaractor and a Rotarian. And now that we're not paying for so many meals, um, maybe there's a more reasonable way to get in. So, David, do you have some? Dave, you have some good quick fire questions for Holger? Yeah, of course. Qu questions, loads of them. You do. <laughs> so here we go, Holger. What does present Elect Holger, this is from Edmund Darty. What does President Elect Holger do for fun? <laughs> so to be honest, yesterday I was walking around our lake. It was about eight kilometers. Just so you know, we are normally just sitting and eating and that doesn't work. So, but, uh, so I love to play golf and we, I had my first round of golf because it was is allowed since uh, three weeks in Germany uh, last week. So to, together with Suzanne. It wasn't very successful, but it was fun. Who, who won? Who won? <laughs> no, who won it didn't count. You know, whenever you, if you don't count, it's much more relaxing. Keith Harris asks Holger, how can we share our stories, our success stories, more effectively? If we simply telling these stories more than before if we let people know that we are Rotarians. I think this is, this is important. And by the way, for, the, for a success of, of Rotary and of a Rotary Club and of us as members, I think you have to be successful for a successful Rotary Club. You need proud members, proud members of your Rotary Club. And then of course, simply start to tell these stories. 
So it's not, for me, it's not a question how we can uh, share. No, we, we simply have to start to tell stories. If we don't do that, nobody will, will uh, hear and see us. A cheeky question, Holger, from Christina Dickens, who asks, are you a natural born leader? That's a difficult question. Uh, I think I think there is no natural born leader. I think that's a process during during your starting as a child. So so I'm very thankful to my father, who really teaches me to always uh, to think of others and always to question yourself. And this is something what I think for me, it's always important questioning always yourself. Is it the right thing what you're doing right now? So it's easy to follow leaders or to follow directions or whatever. So I think it's important questioning yourself. And by the way, the four way test is a perfect way to do that. So I think it's a pro I think you are not born as a leader. I think it's a process. It's a learning process through your whole life. Holger, we, we sat down exactly a year ago in Hamburg just before, you, I mean, in fact, you'd only just heard that you were going to be uh, as, as uh, president for this year. And we talked then about women in, in Rotary. I threw you the, the obvious question of when do you think there will next be a president, a female president of, of Rotary? And you, you played a very diplomatic side pass on that one. No. So let, let me throw it back to you again, this time in the shape of Joanne Cam, who says, I would like to know more about Rotary's plans in terms of promoting women in leadership. I think it's also a process. It becomes, we're we becoming more and more women in leadership. So remember one year ago when Barry Rayson was uh, our president, there was not a single woman on his board. Next year, 2021, I tried to avoid to say my board. <laughs> so in 2020, there will be six women on, on the board of directors. One year later, on Shaker Meta's uh, board will be eight women. And if there is a woman as a RI president, uh, and a uh, designated nominee, nine women. So, so I think this is the progress we, we are making here. But it all starts in Rotary Clubs. As more female members we, will ha we have, as more uh, um, you know, women as club presidents, women as district governors and directors. So I think this is, this is starts. So I think this, we are a real grassroots organization. Everything starts from the Rotary Club level. And by the way, all these decisions we can control regarding the regional leaders or training leaders, we are taking care of uh, being, being an equal number. So 50% and 50%. So do you think it matters whether we have a female president of Rotary International? Uh, no, no, I think, I think we are looking for what I said, I think I said last year to you, we are simply looking for the best leader uh, of those who are uh, throwing their hat into the ring. Uh, so I think that's, that's, we will see that, definitely. Excellent. Nikki? It'll be a wonderful future road um, when we have more diversity in every respect in Rotary. And I think that's where you started in your in your speech at IA, Holger, is not just the gender, but, you know, skills and professions. I mean, I think there's so many different people we can look to in our communities and invite in all of the tradespeople and the community leaders, the education, and as well as age. So there's lots of ways we can improve in that. So it's always rushed it seems amazing that we get to this point so quickly every time when we we get together but um we do ask all of our guests if they would like to summarize and give some three things that you would like to suggest or call to action so that you can help people help themselves to make sure rotary opens opportunities so could you give us a couple of things to, to make yes wonderful thank you for this thank you for this opportunity so i really tried to so number one, number one is always, please, please go not back to normal if we are coming back to normal. Please, please keep that, what we learned virtually. So this is, this is number one. I think that's so important and we can, can be prepared so much better for the future. 
Second, what I'm always saying to Rotary Clubs, hey, look about your future. Make at least one strategic meeting a year and think about where you want to be in five, eight years. I think this is, this is so important. And then make your decisions how you want to grow your Rotary Club. And third is, uh, yes, it's uh, uh, regarding membership. Let's, let's, let's look always for new members what are a good fit to our Rotary Club. I think this is really important. Let's look for the best members for your club and then make sure that also your club meets their expectation. I think this is, this is important uh, for growing Rotary. And don't forget polio, even if it's right now difficult, but this is the promise we made to the children of the world. We want to end polio and we will do that, even if it's right now extremely difficult, but stay with us and let's end polio. Thank you. And then the one you always say is to have fun, right? That's normally whatever happens in Rotary, don't forget to have fun. I think this is so important. <laughs> it's been wonderful to work with you occasionally, Holger, and I know that you, you've got a fan of, of rock music and and uh, celebrating in many different ways. So we look forward to your leadership and a year of you showing us the way to have fun. I still, I still love the Rolling Stones. That doesn't change in the last 40 years. Well, I've seen you headbagging to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, that's all almost it. Holger, vielen Dank für Ihre Zeit heute Abend. Thank you very much for that. Um, I might as well just quickly plug away, because since we've got a bit of time, that in Holger's point about polio, that um, if you're interested in polio, there's a webinar tomorrow night, which is being organised by the MPolio Now team in Great Britain and Ireland, where Mike McGovern, who is Rotary International's, on Rotary International's Polio Plus Committee, will be fielding questions. And he'll be talking about two main things tomorrow night. First of all, the reasons behind the suspension of the polio immunisations and also examples of some of the incredible work that's being done by polio workers and the use of some of the polio infrastructure to help with COVID-19. So that's tomorrow night, Wednesday night, between seven and eight o'clock with NPolio Now. And to find out details on how to log in, you go onto the Facebook page and look up NPolio Now GBI. So that's just it. Thank you very much for Holger and uh, good luck to you um, as you take over present on July the 1st. Uh, thank you very much and bye bye and don't forget Rory have to be fun. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Holger. We'll see you again. Thank soon. you so much. So can you believe it's June next week? I can't believe it. That's really scary. We have a veritable feast of speakers lined up, which will be previewed at the end of this brief broadcast. Next Tuesday at this time, we have got the very funny and entertaining Tony Hawks. The broadcaster and comedian, comedian who is also a philanthropist and he's ambassador actually for child aid right now. He once carried a fridge around Ireland, played tennis with the Moldovans and even had a hit record in Albania. And now he's coming on to Together Talks. So please join us at 19.05 next Tuesday. Register with Eventbrite and do send in the questions to Tony ahead of time. It's good night from Dave and it's good night from me. Thank you everybody.